we bought our Kia Sportage exactly one year ago in America. And now in Korea, we're celebrating its one year anniversary and we're gonna take, finally t take this thing off. Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> What's up YouTube? Patrick from Patrick and Paulina's YouTube channel. I'm here in our Kia Sportage SX Prestige. We're gonna do part two of the icons. So if you haven't seen part one, we're gonna link that below. Check it out. Right now, we are going to dig into the setup and I'm gonna turn off the light so you can see better. Okay, icons part two. From the beginning screen, setup now this is what we didn't go over last time let's start with vehicle so many great options here driving convenience here highway driving assist this means if you have smart cruise control and lane follow assist on the highway only specific highways with kia navigation uh kia highway driving assist will change your speed limit based on the highway speed limit now that is cool when the highway speed limit changes between 70 65 60 miles per hour this will automatically change that it really reads cool. the signs right yeah 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 exactly and um uh and also it doesn't like if you're in traffic bumper to bumper on the highway it won't stop and ask you to restart, uh, like push forward on lane follow assist, it'll just keep going. Important note here, this is highway driving assist version one. This is only version one. So with, in the 2024s, they have highway driving assist version two. That version will include automatic uh, lane switching. So if you wanna switch lanes in highway driving assist version two, all you need to do is turn on your blinker and then your Kia will find a place where no one's at and then it will merge for you. So that's gonna be cool. I'm waiting to see what that's gonna be like. Okay, highway auto speed change. Yes, this is when it'll change for you. Speed limit. If you're using, um, if you're driving, it'll tell you when you're going over the speed limit. So, um, speed limit assist you can adjust uh how fast the kia will let you go over the speed limit without essentially the speed limit sign turning red we can't demonstrate it in korea but you can change it to five miles per hour over 10 or you can change it below the speed limit warning timing uh so this is if you're approaching a car from the rear very quickly and the Kia senses that you're approaching way too quickly, even if you're in smart cruise control and it's tracking it, this will go off, it'll start frantically beeping. The whole vehicle will start frantically beeping, and then if you go too close to the car, it'll automatically lock the brakes. This ha does happen once in a while. In fact, it happened today. The brakes didn't lock, thankfully, but uh, I guess the Kia car determines that you're not paying attention and it will alert you with a really loud sound. And that's something that I do not want to demonstrate for you because that could put us in a dangerous situation. But um, yeah. Yeah, the brake thing happened to us once too, right? Yes, yeah. When we were driving to Las Vegas, the brake thing happened and uh, and maybe the Kia was being overly cautious, but it totally slammed us on the brake. So in that case, if you don't want it on the standard time frame, you can press late and then it will uh, warn you a little later than standard, um, which could be more comfortable because there are times like today where it went off and we didn't feel like it was necessary for it to go off so soon. 
it didn't break us but yeah it's just another one of kia's good safety but features. Uh, when it doesn't break the sound isn't that scary yeah it's not that scary yeah, yeah. but when it breaks it's like a whole different thing yes the car stops yes on its own yes um this is when a driving safety system is activated right when you have this warning thing going off or you're driving uh too too fast on the highway or something it will lower the audio volume it'll lower your radio um which is really helpful parking safety priority if i turn on 360 parking the radio will automatically uh, get low which is really helpful especially when you need to concentrate when you're parking in a tight spot like here in South Korea it's really helpful just to press this parking button and then uh, it's gonna like really lower the radio for you so that comes in handy a lot this is all just driving convenience okay forward safety oh hold on driver's attention warning um, leading vehicle departure that's if you are in uh, smart cruise control and uh, you're at a red light you're stopped automatically and then the car in front of you pulls off if you're not paying attention it'll just remind you it'll say hey you know the the car in front of you is moving away and sometimes that does help if you're not paying attention you can just snap out of it and say oh yeah they're moving away so it can help you get a move on um also inattentive driver warning um i've never had to deal with that i still have it on anyway forward assist uh, provides a warning and vehicle control when a risk of forward collision is detected. So, um, this is extremely similar to this warning time. Everything that we were talking about for this warning time, this falls into forward assist. So when it's active assist, it both, well, when it's warning only, it will only beep at you if you're approaching a car too quickly. With active assist, it will not only beep at you, but it will slam on the brakes too. This is the most safe option yeah, for, so for the active assist. You can just have a, a sound or also braking. Yes. Or you could just have it off. Yes, or you could just have it off like that. I like to keep it on just to be safe. Lane safety. Okay, we've talked about this before. In a previous video, we talked about lane follow assist versus lane keeping assist. This is lane keeping assist. You can turn the assist on and... Um, uh yeah like right here if you look at this it'll have this indicator right here if you're going 40 miles an hour or over and you start drifting out of the lane it'll push you back in the lane it is not as aggressive as self-driving lane follow assist which totally locks you into the center of the lane if you're going good but this one can push you back in or you could set it to just warning only check out our video on that link below we give a better description of everything one uh, commenter, one of our subscribers pointed out that um, this button right here, this is the turn on lane follow assist and the turn off lane follow assist. Do you wanna zoom into this one, this button? Um, but one commenter pointed out that if you hold it down for three seconds, that will actually turn on and off lane keep assist. Mm. How cool is that? We didn't even know about that. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. That's set to warning only assist. So yeah, if you hold this button down, if you just press it, that'll activate lane follow assist. If you hold it down for three seconds, it'll activate lane keeping assist. Awesome, thank you very much for you lovely viewers. Blind spot safety. Okay, blind spot view monitor. So that is, um, so these blind spot view in the cluster when operating the turn signal control. Blind spot view monitor. All that is, is I go like this and it shows this, yeah, this camera here. circle yeah. image. Yeah, so if I turn that off, then boom, it doesn't show it. Sure. If I turn it on, it does show it. Yeah, whenever Great. you try to switch lanes, that's, yeah. that's what and, happens. And it will literally show you the car just like this. It is fantastic. Yeah. Safe exit warning. That is, if there is a car in your blind spot, it will beep at you. Mm -hmm. It'll beep. And it is kind of annoying, it is very annoying, but I'll tell you what, it is helpful. It is extremely helpful to just have that. Um, I mean, it's just annoying to have a car in there. <laughs> like, yeah, it's annoying to have a car in your freaking blind spot, <laughs> am I right? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, parking safety. So if you're backing up, surround view monitor auto on. Yes, obviously I would want that. I don't know who would turn that off. 
what does it look like when it's turned off? Um, I guess it's just the monitor, basically. When you get close to something else, it'll start beeping in any direction. So I keep it on. It'll start beeping like that. Um, parking distance warning. So it'll start beeping rear active assist. Uh, it can do an emergency brake. If you're going to back into something, it'll emergency brake you, which is great. Rear cross traffic assist. If you have cars crossing while you're trying to back up, it'll beep and let you know. Fantastic. If we get it, we'll add a video demonstrating it to this video. Great. Okay, driver convenience. Whew, forward safety. Um, oh, did, this is, did we go over everything? Yeah, we went over everything in this section. Perfect. Okay, active sound design. So, active sound design is we can select the engine sound mode. The smallest change means um, when you are accelerating on the highway and driving, your engine will produce the smallest amount of sound. So, in practice, your Sportage or your Kia will go, will drive, it'll accelerate a little slower, um, but it'll be quieter, which is really nice. I love to keep it on this feature. Um, if you wanna mess around, hey, put it on largest change. Put it on largest change and then- And then what will it do? And then it'll accelerate faster, like you're in sport mode. Mm -hmm. um, and even though there is a separate sport mode here, you can just put it in sport mode. Hmm. Um, and yeah, it'll just accelerate faster. And when it's off, um, I guess it goes to standard. I'm not really sure what it does. Okay, cluster. So this is everything that you're gonna see here on this 12 inch display, the left one. Cluster theme selection. So right here, you have different themes. You have standard theme. This is sport theme. This is wow. eco theme. And this is dynamic. We like to keep it on dy dynamic because it's beautiful. It changes with the time of day and the weather. If it's raining, if it's windy, it'll show that. It'll show when it's night. It'll show when it's dusk. Yeah. It is very beautiful. I've never seen this before. Yes, that's all good. And here it has the um, just the electronic display. But here, it, if you want the analog, that's great. If you want to link it to the driver mode, then hey, smart and normal. Uh, will be that and if you switch it to sport then it'll automatically switch to that if you have a hybrid as well then it will switch to the hybrid eco-friendly model like this great super cool i'll change it back to dynamic though um service interval so service interval uh you can service interval it is just um essentially you can time when you need to get your oil changed next Reset fuel economy. Uh, this is when you can reset your standard fuel economy. We have liters uh, per 100 uh, kilometers. Um, and you can set it at vehicle start or after refueling, which is nice. Content selection. Wiper lights up display. So that is when you turn on your wiper, it will, you'll have this display here. We have it on auto. So if their wiper senses any rain on the windshield it will automatically turn on oh yeah it is wonderful something we haven't even talked about but it's another cool automatic feature you don't even have to touch it yeah. blind spot view monitor we already went over that icy road warning uh if you turn on the car and it's snowing out it's real icy you turn on the car it'll say hey watch out for ice welcome sound provides an audible tone cluster recirculate air tunnel blocks out air when auto automatically when entering a tunnel Hell, I did not even know about this. This will, when we use wiper fluid, and like when you use wiper fluid uh, to block the scent from coming inside the cabin, it'll automatically turn on um, recirculating air mode. And also when you're in a tunnel too. That's so cool. I did not know about that until right now. <laughs> Automatic ventilation. Automatic dehumidifier. Yeah, turn that on. And then I'll never have to worry about turning on a humidifier for the windshield, no matter what. Um, like, yeah, or not, not the windshield, sorry, but it will dehumidify the air. Sure. Sorry. This is what I was referring to. A defog and defroster auto defog. So essentially with this on, I never have to worry about turning on this setting on many cars. The windshield will automatically be defogged all the time. It is absolutely wonderful. 
Okay, seat. Seat position change alert. That is, if I am messing with my seat, it will, right here, it'll show me what I'm doing. I'm going up, I'm going down, I'm going forward, I'm going back, and then I am just in the lumbar. Look but, at that. But do we have that on normally? Yeah, we normally do. We do? Well, yeah. But that's only for I the just, driver's seat, right? Yeah, it's only for the driver's seat. What I do is, I just get in the car, I press number one right here, boom, goes to my assigned setting every single time. <laughs> Seating easy access. Look at that, normal. So that means when I turn off the car like that, I wanna get out, easy access, automatically push the seat back. I get out of the car. I get back in the car, the seat's already back. Pushes me forward, pretty cool. <laughs> do you wanna get out and maybe check, the, check out the sound? No, we'll do that after. Okay. Pretty cool. We're rolling right now, we're rolling. Okay. You can also turn that to extended. For those of you that are six feet tall, I'm a short king, sorry. Extended, you turn it off, it's gonna extend all the way back, all the way back. You get out of the car, you people who are tall, I'm jealous of you. You get back in the car, close the door, and it'll push you all the way forward. These are for those people that are way taller than me. Seat. I will turn that back to normal. Thank you very much. Lights, one touch turn signal. That is, if you don't turn your turn signal all the way, you just give it a quick tap. It'll give you three, three flashes to the right. You can change that to five, to seven, to off. Welcome light. When you welcome light, um, when you walk up to the door and you have your keys in your pocket, uh, the there will be a light that turns on here that illuminates the handle so you can just go right for the handle Headlight delay. Um, that is the exterior lighting will stay on high beam assist. This is incredible If I turn on high beam assist right here It'll come up with this auto and Then whenever it doesn't sense a car or any other light sources in front of us um, The high beams will turn on automatically in a very dark road. This is fantastic right here You can't see it because we're in a parking lot right now, but if you're out on the highway, it will automatically turn on the high beams when safe. And you don't have to worry about turning it on, turning it off, turning and it on, turning it off. They turn and off when... Yes, if another car is approaching you, the high beams will automatically turn off. And then when the car passes, your high beams will turn on again. It is awesome. Another really great Kia automation. We absolutely love it. Yeah. I use this all the time. Nice. Yeah, this is great. Okay, um, yes, headlight delay. I beam assist. Okay. Door. Auto lock. This is enable when you go to drive. Oh, everything's fine. Okay. <laughs> enable when you go to drive or enable when you go to speed. So right now, enable on shift. I move this to drive. Hear that? Mm -hmm. That and now this is demonstrating. Look, I'm in drive right now. This is showing how close we are to this. Yeah. And then, yeah, auto unlock, vehicle off. Turn the vehicle off. You heard it automatically unlocks. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're rolling. We're rolling. Where? What are we at right now? Uh, two press unlock unlocks all doors when the unlock button is pressed twice. That is on your remote. Um, so I don't have that on. I just, one click of the unlock on my key fob unlocks everything. Power lift gate. Um, yes, lift gate button can be used to open and close it. From your key fob, you can open automatically the rear gate. Um, you can change the speed. I have it at fast. That's cool. Power lift gate opening. Hey, for you short kings, you can just have it like that or level one, just a little bit. Hell. User height setting. I don't know why the hell you would even do this, but guess what? You can do it. That's cool. Um, remote window control enables, disables the remote window control function. I don't even know what this is. I'm uninformed. So what? I don't, I don't know what this is. I'm trying to get you the information here. Okay. Rear occupant alert. If you have a baby in the, if you have a baby in the back of the car and you're prone to forget about it, you have this on. When you stop the car oh. and turn it off, it'll tell you rear occupant alert. There's wow. someone in the back seat. Yes, yeah, so that you don't forget them. They're in the heat. Yeah, don't forget your baby or your or dog. Or dog, yeah. yeah. exactly. 
Um, wire That's actually important. Wireless charging system. If we turn off the car and my phone is in the wireless charging system down here, it'll tell me like, hey, phone here. Auto rear wiper in reverse. If it's raining outside and you throw the car in reverse, um, the rear wipers will turn on automatically without you having to do anything. Hey, hell yeah. More automation? Let's do it. That's great. Yeah. Okay, we're rolling. Thank you for checking this out. Um, okay, navigation settings. Vehicle speed, display traffic. Okay, we're going to go over this part more briefly because we can't show it all uh, because our map currently doesn't work. We're in South Korea. Um, and we ha our Kia was manufactured in Georgia by Kia America, not Kia South Korea. Super weird story, but basically <laughs> our software is not compatible. We're the only freaking losers in South Korea with a Kia that can't use their damn maps. That's what I'm trying to say here. But most people here use their phones. Yeah, them. most people here use their phones anyway, so that's fine. But look, check it out. You can standardize the map, the font size, the color, the vehicle symbols, the guidance, the phone, all that great stuff. Okay, how about sound? Premium sound, startup volume limit. That means if you are, startup volume limit. If you're like me in my other car and I'm driving home from work one day and I'm blasting music and I turn off the car, if I go into my old car the next morning i'm super <laughs> tired and everything i turn it on and all of a sudden bomb super loud music so your kia sporters won't do that if you leave your radio on a super loud sound and then you come in the next morning it'll start at a normal sound so it won't scare you like that oh, wow. how about that position oh my god look at this look at how much customization this is you can position this all the way here that can be your radio position if you have a kid that's sleeping back here. Oh, oh my God, look. The sound. Yeah, look at this. That's crazy. That is crazy right there. Interesting. Tone, okay, normal bass, treb, stuff like that, great. Guidance, volumes, this is for navigation and stuff like that. Mute navigation guidance, navigation guidance, driving calls, cool. Active sound design, we already went over this. Radio noise, uh, minimum noise reduction. Maybe someone can tell me what that is but you can pause the video and check it out. Uh, driver assistance. Um, we are, this just, whenever there's an alert, it'll, that you can set how loud it is when a driving safety system activates. Connected devices, Apple CarPlay. Here you go. You can balance out how loud you want that versus how loud you want your own car, your, your Apple CarPlay. Okay, device connections. Here, this is just basic stuff. You can connect your phone. Enable Android Auto. You split screen on Android. Oh, sorry. I think we, we talked about this in the first yeah. video, right? Yes. User profile. Okay. I just have one profile right here. We don't switch profiles. All we do to switch profiles is when me and Paulina are in the car, I press one over here to get to my seat. Paulina presses two over here. And this is where Paulina drives. And we never do that in Korea. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we you're don't. you're the, the one that tries. Yeah. Okay, user profile. Voice recognition. Reduce the number of voice recognition prompts. Uh, okay, someone can explain that to me in the comments. Thank you very much. I'm trying to move here, so thank you for your patience. Screen layout. Check this out. Okay, we already did this. Oh, yes, yes, we already did this. Dynamic. Okay. Display, illumination, brightness auto adjusts, or, oh my God, look how bright that is. <laughs> wow, yeah. That's bad for your eyes. Uh, Don't, I keep it on the minimum. I save my eyes and I make it as less intrusive yeah, as possible. Use blue light filter. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. Use it all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. More warm. You can make this all the way warm. Look how yellow this is now. Good for your eyes. Blue light filter settings, automatic. Schedule time when it's dark out. How about that? Oh, we don't want it that yellow, though. Yeah, we don't want it that yellow. We'll do it like here. Yeah. Camera settings. Display contents. Okay, yeah, you can see everything when you can take pictures from your Kia Connect in parking surroundings. Okay, very nice. Button. Okay, we're almost done here. Thank you for sticking with me till the end. If you've stuck with me this far, you're our probably number one viewer. Okay buttons custom navigation 
button. Okay, this is the star. This star is right here. If I, and you can, this button right here on the navigation, you can set it, it'll automatically connect to Bluetooth audio. So it'll be like this, it'll be Bluetooth audio, and then it'll automatically connect. You can set it to a different setting. You can set it to your phone, phone projection, your phone, phone calling, phone projection. You can set it to quiet mode with the radio. We displayed that in another video. Display on off, um, Wi-Fi hotspot or none. These are all what you want to do. That is your one customizable button here on the navigation. You have a second customizable button here on the steering wheel. Here's another star. What can you do for that? You can turn on quiet mode, you can cancel route, you can pick up the phone, you can hang up the phone, you can end a call, etc. Great. Okay, button settings, the mode button for steering wheel, a third customizable button here. I press mode, it's automatically gonna get me to FM. That's what I know. It's automatically gonna get me to the radio. I have this button for Bluetooth audio, I have this button for FM. That's it, very customizable. Okay, button wheel steering selection. Um, this, this is so complicated to talk about, we can dedicate a third video to it, but this is how, if you press this button down, like this radio button here, you press it down or up just once, we have it set to, it will change the channel, and if you long hold it, it will change, not the radio channel, it will change what radio setting you're on. It'll change it from FM to AM to Bluetooth to phone projection, all of those to sounds of nature, all of those different audio settings, it will change to. With this customizable option, you can reverse that setting, that a short hold will change the radio setting to FM, AM, and a long hold will change the the radio station within FM. Okay, that's all of that condensed into one little explanation. Volume tilt knob, okay. You want this left side or do you want the right side to change what? And you can reverse that. Oh, wait, so right now, it, this one is the volume, right? Yes, and volume this... and this is browse. And look at this button can right here. Can we change? Yeah, look, look, check it out, check it out, swap. Boom, okay, that's it. Now that's the volume, this wow. is the... I wonder if we can do that, that for, what else does it do? Well, oh, the temperature. Temperature is split. Temperature is split. So oh, yeah. split, check it out. If you want to do the temperature, you can sync it up. If you're the only one driving, sync it up and then change it according to what you want. You have your, you have on your auto climate. Your auto climate is going to just set it to whatever temperature you set it to, like this. Or, or if you have two people in the car, then Paulina can change it. She wants it to 73 on her side. I want it to 67 on my side. You can change it to both settings for each person very cool right yeah i'm really happy about that yeah. swap yeah about the volume because yeah. i always have to reach so far to change the volume if i want to change the, yeah i always dreamt of having that button here. yeah and you know what if you set the volume over here that's great because i have a volume button yeah. right here on the steering wheel yeah so <laughs> hell yeah we found it Yay. okay data network that is about your wi-fi um you get like three months of free wi-fi if you buy a new kia or something like that really cool blah 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 we talked about that. we talked about it yeah okay and then finally these are the deep settings right here which i won't get into everything this is the platform update you have your language you have your keyboard well let us know if you want a part three because yeah. then we can let us talk know more we are here to answer your questions okay if you want to see something if you want to see something more please let us know because we have a lot of content and there's so much to talk about i set mine to kilometers because we're in freaking we're in Europe. No. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> well, we're, we're in Korea, but you're, we're in Korea. you have a European wife. So. Yeah, I have a European wife. Okay. My God. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that is the buttons of the Kia Sportage Part 2, okay? Yay. You saw it all. We delivered on our promise to make a Part 2, so please... Like, subscribe, comment, love us, like us, hate us, let us know. Yay. <laughs>